Example 2.1. Consider the function f at x equals 2x minus 3. Part A. Determine the x and y intercepts of y equals the absolute value of f of x. So here, when we're looking at our x-intercepts, the x-intercept is the same for f at x and the absolute value of f of x. So what I'm going to do is solve for my x-intercept on 2x minus 3. And we get 3 over 2, 0. So plotting that out, the y-intercept we can solve for. So the y-intercept occurs when x equals 0, which gives us a y-intercept at 0, 3. Part B, sketch the graph of y equals the absolute value of f at x. Based on the shape of the graph from the previous page, I know that my graph is going to come down through my y-intercept, and then it reflects and changes direction at the x-intercept. Part C, state the domain and range of y equals the absolute value of f at x. For absolute value functions, the domain remains unchanged, so our domain here would be the same as f at x equals 2x minus 3. So for 2x minus 3, our domain is x is an element of the real numbers. Our range, what we've done with our y values now is gotten rid of all of the negative y values. So our range is going to be greater than or equal to 0. Part D, express y equals absolute value of f of x as a piecewise function. So what we're going to do here is we're going to take our function 2x minus 3 and we're going to split it up. And the two parts we're going to split it up into are the part that's positive and the part that has changed. When we're describing absolute value as a piecewise function, there's two options. We either had the original function be positive, in which place, or in which case we keep it, and that's what we're doing here with the 2x minus 3, or it's negative, and we're taking the negative of that to make it a positive value, and that's what we're doing here. The last part is to determine where we want each of these functions. If we look at our graph, everything to the right of the x-intercept was the original function, so I'm going to say x is greater than or equal to 3 over 2, and then we took the negative of everything to the left of the x-intercept, so x is less than 3 over 2. So what we have here is the positive portion of the graph up top, and the part that we took the negative of, because it was below the x-axis, below.